Hi, everyone, and welcome to the screencast for December 3rd. Hard to believe it is December with this amazing weather that we've had. Schedule for the week. Uh, just a couple of things to point out. Uh, we have a staff meeting at 8 o'clock. It will uh, primarily focus on math assessments, uh, so be aware of that. I know we talked a bit about that before, but we want to share a little bit more information about that. Uh, Friday, we have a few different things going on. We have our uh, fourth grade kindness retreat. Uh, we also have the uh, Kennedy High School Music Program. And uh, we also have a family fun night sponsored by PTA starting at 6.30, so a few things going on. So on Thursday, we had our staff development uh, day, and uh, I thought there's a lot of good things that happened. I know I was with kindergarten for ELA. We had the um, snafu with volume on the video, but other than that, I thought there were some really interesting and important things that were presented. I really want to thank Kathy Kiro and our tech team for leading our uh, tech unconference. I thought we had some good things going on there. And also thank you to Krista, Rachel, and Dave uh, for helping with our uh, trauma uh, in service too. And I included the links uh, that uh, Rachel had sent you to the TED Talk that on effects of childhood trauma as well as the uh, Westwood staff trauma presentation. And our special ed uh, department, I know, received uh, an in-service on trauma also. So that seems to be something that's uh, being stressed not only at Westwood, uh, but also around our whole district. So make sure you click on those links and check those out. Um, also, Don, you see that there's a district staff development survey feedback, so feedback survey. So if you could click on that and give some feedback, that would be great. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about our uh, trauma presentation and, and some of the things that are important to me that I keep thinking about. Um, one, it's a lot about language. It's how we talk with kids. Uh, that's always helpful. I also heard that um, we still have expectations and hold kids accountable, uh, but we're trying to help de-escalate situations. And it is hard in a classroom when you have a kid uh, that's having issues and you have everybody else that you need to teach and your curriculum and I understand that so I always look at this as more tools that we can use um, that we can uh, use when we have difficulty with kids and, and know that it is difficult and I totally understand that but uh, these two slides here seem to me uh, some of the things that I really try to think about and use when I can and um, you know they're just more things that we can add to our toolbox to help when we have kids that are struggling in our classroom. And the other thing I always think about is just uh, relationships. We know that uh, the more we can connect and build relationships with kids, uh, the more that helps with all of this. And I think that's one of our strengths at Westwood and something that we want to keep, keep working on and, and keep stressing. So thank you for your work with that. PBIS, um, wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, PBIS is a school-wide approach to behavior with common language, and uh, it's something I've been thinking a lot about. We have a lot of schools already in Bloomington, in fact, pretty much all of them uh, that are PBIS schools, and that's something I've experienced with um, from my previous school. And uh, the whole point uh, behind it is it's a, it's a systems approach. It's proactive. Um, it, it's trying to look at what you have at your school and, and trying to be systematic with a common language. Uh, and it's not a cookie cutter approach. So I want to let you know I'm thinking about that. And uh, if we were to become a PBIS school, we have to have our application in by January 18th. And it's a two year uh, process to become a PBIS school with a team. And so all I'm asking uh, for people to be aware of right now is just to keep an open mind on it. I want to talk with us. I want to talk about this at a staff meeting, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday and just talk about what PBIS is and what it means. Um, you can see I have a little information on here. Um, I know we have some differences sometimes thinking about how a uh, responsive classroom and PBIS can fit together, um, and I know that it can, uh, but it's definitely things to think about. So um, <clears throat> just keep that in mind that not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, I wanna present some information. And then at some point, um, hopefully right when we get back from winter break, uh, we're gonna answer more questions and take a vote uh, with teachers, paras, office staff, etc. My my job is to make sure you have all the information possible so that when we get to that point, um, you can make an informed decision on, on what you think about PBIS and whether you think it's a good fit for our school. So I uh, just want that to be on your radar and uh, love to hear uh, any comments you have about that. So 
Stay tuned for more information about that. Targeted services. Hey, we have our coordinator for targeted services in John Polhill. Thank you for, to John for being willing to do that. Um, our plan, um, if we get enough teachers that are interested in participating and uh, being a part of it, um, my plan would be to start uh, targeted services after winter break. Uh, it would be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I can't remember exactly how much as I'm at home right now, but I think it's about an hour, maybe an hour and a half after school. Um, and the number of students just depends on the amount of teachers that we get. So uh, teachers, if you are interested in uh, participating in targeted services and getting paid for your time and being able to work with kids, uh, talk with me. Um, the more teachers we have, obviously the more kids we can have. And it is uh, an established curriculum and it focuses on engagement. From what I've heard from other schools, those that have done it, um, have, teachers have done it, really liked it and, and say it really fits. And uh, it's a good opportunity to connect with kids, uh, but it's not something like you're having to come up with everything on your own and reinvent the wheel. So that's a good thing. So let me know if you're interested. Um, hopefully we can get some teachers that want to be part of that. Um, I'd say we need at least uh, three teachers um, in order to make this a go. So talk to me and uh, we can see what we can do. So we have our, our Kennedy High School music concert on Friday. Looking forward to that. Uh, the one thing I still need to figure out, and I've talked a little bit with John Peterson about this, is our lunch schedule. So I know we have fourth grade out. Uh, we're doing some moving around of things as best we can. Um, so stay tuned for more information on that. I apologize that we don't have that done. but. Um, Hopefully we'll get that figured out on Monday and then let everybody know how that works. Uh, the hard part is in order to get everybody through lunch um, and recess and all of that prior to going uh, to Kennedy, that's gonna be tough. Uh, but let me talk with Lisa and John and we'll see what we can figure out and hopefully we can get that straightened out. And the last thing, thanks to uh, Kathy Carroll for helping to organize our Hour of Code and teachers for participating in this. I'm looking forward to seeing a few things. If you'd like me to stop in, uh, shoot me an email. I'll do my best to stop by. So that should be a fun thing. Well, that's all I have. Hey, I hope you had a great weekend. Looking forward to seeing you for this last push for the last two weeks. Before we get to winter break, I can't believe I just said that. Only two weeks until winter break. So have a great rest of your Sunday and see you all on Monday. Take care, everyone.